Boy, what a crash. Hi, I'm Sam Wright, producer for Aquastar Productions, and you've probably seen lots of our tape. Top Gun, Madeira, the Scale Masters, but when you produce that many tapes, you're bound to have crashes, and you know we don't like to show crashes, particularly of this expensive hardware. But we've been talked into it, and we've developed for your enjoyment, and laughs, I hope, out of control. So sit back, hang on, and watch some spectacular footage. and welcome to Mr. Fixit's workshop. As you recall, last week I introduced you into the art of model airplane building, which can be enjoyed by the entire family, a very relaxing hobby. We started working on the Era Cobra, which is a very maneuverable World War II fighting aircraft that I understand was also used in Vietnam and in Korea. We were working on the wing section over here, and we put the spars in, and we went ahead and put the tail edge, got the leading edge started on there. But to bring matters up to speed a little bit, I went ahead and completed that model all the way up to the stage that you see here because we just don't have the time on television to build the plane all the way through. Now, as you remember last week when I was laying the skin on the wing, I flubbed up a little bit. I put my thumb right through here. Now, this area is very fragile. You have to really... Now, I've just done it again, see? You have to watch that, okay? Uh, I wonder, I think they have time to put a patch on that. You want to take a sander, like an orbital sander, the same kind that you get at the hardware store, and just lightly graze over the wing. Okay, you probably want to use a little bit lighter grade sandpaper than the one that I used right here. Uh, I think I have some balsa wood over there. Well, once again, once you've learned the rules, it's okay to break the rules. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and fasten the model down to the workbench here to keep it from moving around because I think that's what happened last week is the model moved and uh, that was responsible for the entire problem. Uh, up above here, I've got some ladder sandpaper and a patch for that wing that we just messed up. If I can get into my cupboard and we'll check it out. Do that again. Join Mr. Fixit next time as he introduces you to the art of model airplane repair. The aircraft you're about to see are going to completely destroy themselves. And by the way, these are expensive aircraft, no fun fly aircraft here, and the names of the pilots have been withheld to protect them from their wives.
Now this little dirt throwing devil is a drone jet from Germany with two, one on each side, pulse jets, burning nothing other than pure gasoline. I just about got both engines started. This baby is catapulted into the air by a giant bungee cord. It'll lose its gear and as it gets airborne, both engines kick in for full power. The only problem is one engine flames out. This is no laughing matter. This is a very, very, very serious aircraft. Museum quality. I think it's a Groman Mohawk OV-1D built by David Platt. His friends call him David Splat, so stand by. is 60 right out of the air. This big aircraft is a big Tiger Cat built by Dave Breedy. Big twin engine built especially to go racing. Only it doesn't want to go racing. Dave grabs a hold of the uh, wing just to get it straightened out, head it back out onto the race course. Full power, almost too much power. The torque almost slams it into the dirt and barely airborne. Now what do you do with an airplane that's just pieces? You do just that. Throw it in a trash barrel and let the kids pick it apart. Now watch this adrenaline takeoff. Barely missing the pylon. This big multi-horsepower aircraft, now airborne, does experience a little bit of shear. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, out on the flight line is an unusual race entry. 
This is all the parts that were left over from the Red Dog Saloon aircraft. Hey, Tom Carr, who's in charge down there? Gentlemen, tell me a little bit about what you did out here. Well, we had a lot of the packing crate left, not much of the airplane, so we thought we'd use that. And we uh, had a, a T6 engine left over from that crash and a bunch of alternate parts. So uh, we put our ace carpenter uh, to work on it, and uh, in the, as little as two hours, he came up with this totally aerodynamic airplane, and we're going to test fly any moment now. <laughs> Well, listen, the material cost here has to have been something. Can you tell us a little bit about the amount of money and design that went into this? Well, it looks like about uh, $4,000 in materials. There's a lot of carbon fiber in there, and it's about $0.10 cents worth of engineering, and then there's about <laughs> $2.50 worth of labor. But uh, I don't know. It, it, we, we had it running in the pits and cycled the gear. All we're worried about now is if we can get it to rotation speed. your plan for bringing it in? I'm just going to land it. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it'll slide in. Uh, I'm going to put it on one wheel. Here. enough to close that gap before the checker. Coming up high on top of him, look at this finish. A racehorse finish. Get the pin up, sweating it out. crashes here but just plain hot dogging and what we have here is just a bunch of hot dogs flying as low as they possibly can check this landing out pop the gear at the absolute last minute now this t-33 this happens to be garland hamilton and he's really down smoking on the deck trying to maintain the lowest altitude flyby and boy he's just on the asphalt fall on right behind him this f-86 is trying again but doesn't quite just pull it off 
Now if you really want to find who the low pass winner is it's this T 33 watch how close he was to the asphalt. The helicopter had to take his shot at it too and he does touch the runway watch this next shot will freeze right on the nose. Now some of these guys got too close to the asphalt as you see here and he's in a box taking it home. This aircraft the air tank was blown up way beyond capacity and honey I did blow up the airplane. Look at the carnage inside of this aircraft. And this is a result of another one of those crashes and this one even the kids don't want it. This aircraft, we didn't catch, it just exploded in the air. This is an example of how strong these aircraft are with a carbon fiber wing. This particular aircraft erupted into flame when it hit the earth and a lot of carnage and charcoal here. This aircraft, once he got airborne, you'll see the pile of dust. He went into the dirt immediately. This will give you an idea of the type of wreckage that we get out of these aircraft and the size of the uh, pieces. Now this guy had a real problem, could not get his gear down and decided to bring it in for a belly landing. What a superb job he did though, watch this. Now you can imagine the comment here must be, don't worry, you won't feel a thing. And this guy was out taking hedges down and still has a piece hung up into the wing of his aircraft. And for you carnage lovers, this is a closer look at this shrapneled aircraft. This will be a real repair job for somebody. Now this guy, Dennis Crooks actually, flying this beautiful Lear 35A, knew he had a landing gear problem, brought it in very gently, just barely bumped the board, popped the wheel off, and the aircraft actually was okay, and no accident is complete without a little bit of help 
from the medevac guys.
once again and welcome to Mr. Fix-It's workshop. A beautiful day. We're in back of the Mr. Fix-It workshop today. Outside here, working on the same Aero Cobra we were working on last week. As you recall, last week, Mr. Fix-It met with a little accident here. He was trying to repair the wing, and he stood up, as you can see in the picture here, to get something out of his upper shelf, lost his balance, and crushed the Aero Cobra almost beyond recognition. But this week, we're sitting here, or standing here, with the very same Aero Cobra, the World War II fight machine that you see in front of you. Now, resin is a very good way to cure the wing on an airplane once it's been damaged. But resin also takes a lot of time, and television doesn't allow that much time. So what I've done is I've gone and whipped up my own batch of secret Mr. Fix-It resin glue, which I'm going to go ahead and put on all the wings right here. Now, once again, once you've learned the rules, it's okay to break the rules. But until then, it's better to do it the way the instructions say and go ahead and use a nice fine epoxy glue or a resin compound and these are all very good and just get it all evenly on here like that good now I can't stress safety enough so I brought my goggles with me and a pair of gloves what I'm gonna do is use a heat gun to cure that in a matter of seconds here because television doesn't always allow the time for resin or any special concoction to cure now you want to set your heat gun on low and keep it six to eight inches away from the work. You don't want to get it any closer than that. A little bit more on the wing right here. A little in this area over here. Okay. Keeping it six to eight inches of the work, you want to hold it in the... Oh, fire! Andy! We regret that Mr. Fixit will not be seen next week due to minor studio repair. Well, I have hoped you enjoyed that great tape because I want to tell you we had a blast just... Oh, excuse me. Hello, this is Sam Wright. Yes, I am the producer of Out of Control. Uh, you, didn't, you didn't like the tape? You, we've had a blast laughing putting this thing together. Everybody thought it was... I'm really sorry. I, I didn't know... Uh, wow, I, I didn't know it was your airplane. Uh, you really got thin skin. I'm really sorry. We'll uh, send you... You don't want a tape? I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, hey, I gotta go. I'm really sorry. Well, <laughs> I still think that was a funny tape. <laughs> we didn't think it was that funny, Sam. Um... Um, 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 <laughs> <laughs>